You have to work the weekend. Oh, come on, Beverly. I just covered the last two. What can I do? Joni's still sick. Kim's on her honeymoon. I've got no head nurse. But I promised my kids we're going to Disney World. They're all excited. I can't do that to them. I can't do it, Beverly. Then what the hell do you want me to do? Have the patients run around and treat themselves? You're on this weekend, Annie. If you think of something else I can do, let me know. Yeah, you can drop dead, bitch. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe I said drop dead and two hours later. Annie, it's not your fault. <laughs> she didn't even hear you. In my country, you don't have to hear it. You don't have to speak it. You think the thing, and if you have the power, that's it. <laughs> you better stay on her good side, Sandy. <laughs> Gina, stop that. What I do? I only tell the truth. Annie, honey, that's her country. They sacrifice children there. <laughs> that's absurd. We're not a bunch of primitive tribes. We sacrifice chickens. I can't stand it. I said, drop dead. I said, drop dead. And she dropped dead. It really is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Beverly could be a very difficult person. Now, you know that. Any one of us could have said it. We all thought it at one time or another. Well, that's true. But when you said it, she died. <laughs> you have the powers. Thank you, Gina. Oh, I'm so glad he finally gets to see me in black. It's such a good color for me. Oh, I know. Thank God we had this event to come to. Hi. 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 Well, I took the I-95. It was bumper to bumper. Get off at Lincoln Boulevard. Nothing's moving. Car overheats. I get here. No parking space. You should never take I-95. You should always use the surface roads at this time of day. It's longer, but it takes less time. I hate red lights. Do you know where we are? Do you? Do you have any idea where we are? <laughs> at the Church of the Good Shepherd. <laughs> for a funeral, someone is dead. Well, of course I'm as dead, Annie. If no one were dead, then the coffin would be empty, and this would all be an enormous waste of time. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm glad the coffin is closed. I, I couldn't look if it were opened. You work in a hospital, for God's sakes. What do you mean you couldn't look? Well, I know her. Oh, I knew her. We had lunch just last week. She had salad with no dressing. Can you imagine? No dressing. I never eat dressing. If you knew you were going to die, you would. <laughs> you eat everything. Yeah, I can eat everything anyway. I'm blessed with a great metabolism. Oh, you are. You really are. A fantastic one. God, the traffic. I think everyone was coming here. Take the 27? I always take the 27. Crazy. Well, at least it has five lanes and it moves. Except when it doesn't. You know, it's interesting to see us all together in black when we're usually all together in white, isn't it? This is gray. I love black. This is blue. Blue's appropriate, isn't it? You're asking me? I, I know nothing about funerals. You were in Vietnam. Oh, sure, right, yeah. As soon as a guy fall over, we'd stop fighting, put on our dark suits, have a service. Really? The trouble was we were putting them on and taking them off so much, you know, like two, three hundred times a day. And the enemy wasn't. That's why we lost the war. How can y'all talk about things like this? Someone is dead. We didn't kill her. <laughs> Do you seriously think that I killed her? Do you really believe that? Yes. Hey, tell her. Tell her how Beverly died. Oh, I know that. Cerebral hemorrhage. But who wished it? I can't believe it. It's so scary. 39 years old and she drops dead in the hospital. Hey, hey guys. A ruptured AVM kills in minutes. We know that. It's an explosive event. You get a headache, you collapse, it's over. But I have headaches all the time. I have a headache right now. I have a time bomb in my brain. At least there'd be something in there. It's too hot to have funerals in Miami. Well, what do you suggest, Julie? A luau at night by the pool. That's not a bad idea, night funerals. Shut up, Julie. Well, I'm just trying to make conversation. Well, don't. It's not something you excel at. It's okay. She just feels responsible, and she's in a bad, bad mood. She has blood on her hands. Cut it out, Gina. I think it's going to start soon. I hope so. I'm parked in a tollway zone. <laughs> I love it when they play that music. Dee dum dee dum. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. 
They do not play Here Comes the Bride at a funeral. That's right. What's the song? In my country, we're too poor for music. We only have the bells from the church, which in fact are not from the church, but from a man in the church with a cowbell. You know, I am sick of your country. Unless, of course, a rich person dies, then we have the accordion. How many funerals have you been to? Oh, many. In my village, death is a friend. And you? What? How many funerals? No, oh, just one, my grandmother. <laughs> Thousands. I never counted. I've been to two. Well, actually, three if you count death of a salesman. <laughs> My heels are stuck in the ground. How can you wear such high heels? The higher the heel, the better your leg looks. I wish they had chairs. I wish they had air conditioning. They can't. It's outdoors. Gee, it is outdoors, isn't it? Grass, trees. Should have known. Are you family? I've never seen you before in my life. <laughs> How can we be family? No, I meant of the uh, deceased. Oh, a friend, co-worker, you? Well, actually, I'm not at this funeral. I was the one over there, and then I saw you and just had to come to this one. <laughs> well, I think you better go back to yours. Is it a friend that you buried? My father. Get out of here, will you? He came to this funeral to meet me. Can you imagine the nerve? It's disgusting. Which one is he? He's the very, very gorgeous one over there. The one who can't take his eye off me. I think we have to move closer. I can't. I'm afraid of heights. There is no height. We're on level ground. The grave. I'm afraid I'll fall in. I'll stand in front of you. Well, then I can't see. There is nothing to see. Then why are we here? I have red ants biting my ankles. Red ants bite. What is wrong with you? Oh, my God, they're going to bury her. I can't stand it. Oh, my God. I could faint, Hunk. Just, just hold on to me. Tramp. Never see her again. If we do, it'll be a hell of a trick. <laughs> Houdini did it. Shut up, Julie. <laughs> Look, there's Peter, her fiance. Julie, be quiet. They were so happy they were going to be married in two months. I know. At least she had that at the end a wonderful love with a man who treasured her. How many people can die with that? <laughs> oh, come on, you'll get a guy someday. Get off her. Can't you see she's grief stricken? She hardly knew her. She's very sensitive. For God's sake, pull yourself together. This is a funeral. I understand, Sandy. I understand. No, you don't. It's a sad, sad time. No, that's not it. Well, what is it? It's awful. I did the most awful thing. What, honey? Peter. Yes? Her fiancé. Last week, I, I slept with him. You slept with him? How many times are you going to ask me that question? It's just happened there's blood on your hands, too. There is no blood on my hands, Gina. There's no blood on her hands. There's no blood. There's blood. Why did you sleep with him? 
Why do you sleep with anybody? You're lonely, you're looking forward to a night of lean cuisine and television reruns, and a very attractive man asks you to have dinner. So you sleep with him. No, you eat with him. And you have wine with him, and he brings you home, and he tells you how lovely you are and how he's always been interested in you, but he never dared make a move because he was afraid, and he knows he's engaged, but he just can't help himself. And he's stroking your cheek, and next thing you know, he's brushing your lips with his, and you feel yourself get all weak and shaky. Weak and shaky? A slow blood sugar, you should drink orange juice. that Peter told her and she got so upset this thing popped in her brain and killed her? It would help me out a little. I left punk. Oh, no, don't tell him. Oh, no, no, I'll just make it a hypocritical question. It was such a wonderful night, too. I may have had a few bad thoughts about something happening to Beverly. Oh, closest that's happened to me was with my aunt, Colony. I hated those ants. Then they started dying. The living ones kept carrying around the dead ones, and it was like a mini death camp. I had to watch every day as more and more died. So finally, I just dumped the whole thing in the trash. Huh? Hmm. If someone got very upset, you know, crazy upset over something, then could this thing happen in the brain like it happened to Beverly? Mm, not likely. Oh, thank God. Then Sandy didn't kill her. And what did Sandy do? I'm not allowed to tell. Mm. Did Sandy do something to Beverly? Not to Beverly. Mm. She do something to upset Beverly? Oh, yes. If Beverly knew, which we don't know if she did. Oh. What did she do, sleep with Peter? How do you know that? I didn't say that. Mm. I know Peter. He sleeps with everybody. No. No? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell Sandy. She'll be so happy. <laughs> When my grandmother was dying, she asked me to pull the plug. But she wasn't plugged in anything. It was only the television plug. I have the greatest, best news for you. You are not responsible by sleeping with Peter and causing distress. Peter slept with everyone. <laughs> what? Hank told me, everyone, he don't care who. Isn't that great? Oh, my God. What's the problem? Now I not only feel guilty, but cheap and worthless. You may want some food. They got a table loaded with well, stuff. Well, how can you think of eating at a time like this? No, nothing for me. I couldn't get anything down. When I'm upset. I completely lose my appetite, which is really kind of dangerous because it could upset my electrolyte balance and I could get a cardiac arrhythmia. Okay, but they got great deli stuff from Wolfie's. Oh, bring me a pickle. Pickle. Well, as long as you go, I'll have a small piece of chicken, white meat. Chicken. Unless I have turkey, then I'll have turkey. But it has to be fresh and not that turkey roll. And if it's fresh, then I'll have it on a Caesar roll. Kaiser roll. <laughs> With Russian dressing and coleslaw? Gotcha. Did it have pastrami? Oh, yes. Lean. Rotten right mustard. Sure. I'll get my own. God knows where his hands have been. I don't want to be buried. I don't want to be cremated. Me neither. Well, Sandy, it's one or the other. I don't like either. I want to be laid out on a slab like Juliet and Romeo. I want to be laid in the forest. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said I want when to be she's laid... dead. She wants to be laid out. In the forest. Like in a ballet that I saw. Mm. Except, of course, without the dancing. I want to be buried, but with someone. Well, I want to be cremated and have the ashes thrown on my ex-wife's face. <laughs> Julie, you want to be buried or cremated? No. <laughs> Got to be one or the other, Julie. I can't stand it. I just can't stand the thought of it. You could get frozen. Never. I can't even take a New England winter. <laughs> Happy to see you girls here. I didn't know Beverly had so many friends. We're so happy to be here. Not happy un under the circumstances. <laughs> We're glad we could be with you. I'm so glad you all made friends with Beverly. She talked about all of you. I know you're Annie. How? Because you're black, darling. <laughs> she said you were the best head nurse. I'm just so glad you're here. I thought nobody would show up but her brother and sister. Actually, 
Uh, her brother couldn't make it. He has a horse running in Hialeah. <laughs> but you came. I used to tell Beverly, make friends. Life is short, and it's about love and friends. Well, go eat some food. God knows Beverly never did. <laughs> we weren't her friends. I don't think we need to straighten her out on this. She didn't have any friends. She died alone. Gina, I hope you're not planning on sharing this with her mother. No. This I share with Hunk. Um, ma'am, I really can't tell you what poisons can't be traced. <laughs> she wants to kill her neighbor because her neighbor's dog barks. Wouldn't it be easier to kill the dog? No, she loves dogs. Hunk, I have something to tell you. Yeah? I'm not waiting for you. You got that? Life is short. I want a family, children. I could have been Beverly. We die, not other people. We die, and it could end any time. So I'm not waiting around for you forever, Dr. Hunk Kappen. You got that? You want me? You do something about it now. <laughs> I'm waiting. Gina, Gina, what are you talking about here? I mean, we're young. We have the rest of our lives. You're getting a little hysterical. Hysterical? Hysterical? The rest of our lives? How long is the rest? You know for sure another 60 years? You have a note that says that? Beverly was 39. She thought she had the rest of her life that day. It turned out to be another two minutes. Think about it. <laughs> You know, I hold the grudges. I know. How do you know? Because you never forgave me for losing those earrings I borrowed. Every time anybody says ears, earaches, or earrings, you look at me. I have an enormous list of grudges. I'm sure. You could get so upset over such crappy earrings. <laughs> it's so stupid. Life is so short. I haven't talked to my brother in a year over something incredibly stupid. He borrowed some pearls? <laughs> you know, if I died right now, I'd feel terrible. I gotta get rid of this list before I die. What about you? Don't you have a list? No. Mm -mm. I'm fine with my friends and family. I got a list of guys, but that's something else. What? No, guys you spend a night with or a week with who tell you how they're crazy about you and make you feel like a goddess and then just disappear, vanish, like Peter did. I can't tell you how much time I have spent waiting for the phone to ring. Not taking a bath because I didn't want to be in the tub when they called. You know, if you added it up, it must be days, months of my life I've spent waiting. And then they never call, and that's that. Well, that doesn't have to be that. What doesn't have to be what? I don't have to do that, and they should know what they do. Where are you going? To settle a score. Sandy, now is not the time to confront Peter. Peter? Please, there must be six other men in this room that have dumped me. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. I forgot to tell you something two years ago when you told me that you loved me and the night was magic and then you disappeared in a rocket and I never saw you again. I forgot to mention that I'm a person with feelings who doesn't deserve to be lied to and left like yesterday's underwear. Don't do that again. To anyone. Ever. No, let me fix you a little something. Oh, no, no, thank you. I rarely eat food that's been sitting out. Mayonnaise can turn, lies can land, bacteria can form. How about a nice piece of chicken? Salmonella. Might as well put a gun in your mouth. Well, we have some gorgeous roast beef. Antibiotics. Steroids. Lobster. Thank you. Bottom feeders. They eat the garbage in the ocean. <laughs> Pastry. Butter. Sugar. Salad. Nitrates. Pesticides. What are you so afraid of? Actually, everything. But there must be one great fear. Death. Oh, I am so sorry. This isn't the time to say something like that. This is very much the time. Listen, Beverly is gone. Whatever she didn't do out of fear, whoever she didn't reach out to, she can't do it anymore. If you live your life afraid of dying, you've lived your life dead. Gina, please. 
I need to come here, and I want you to come with me. You know, Gina, I I'm Jewish. I don't belong here, here in certain country clubs. <laughs> you were just here for the service. Yeah, that was different. There were people here. It's empty now. I want to say goodbye. Gina, what? the statue moaned, I swear. You're being silly. No, 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 you don't understand. Here, you sit here. And just wait. I'll go, okay? Okay. Gina. What? It moved. What moved? The statue moved. They don't want me here. They know I'm Jewish. This is God's house. Everyone is wanted here. I won't be long. parents weren't like this. It's the show that forever changed the way we think about adulthood. In tonight's episode, Michael's married to his work, so hope looks elsewhere for affection. It's a brave new world out there in the land of 30-something, only on Lifetime.